So Jamal Nyas here with Mike Grundy. Just finished a training session ahead of your um, UFC London fight against Maquan Amir Khani. That's the second time that you guys have been matched up. I remember you were matched up the 2021, weren't it? Obviously, it got called off. Um, how different has preparation been for this one in comparison for that 2021? No different, really. I mean, obviously, yeah, I was I prepared for him before. I was supposed to fight him in 2020, I think it was, and then the, the pandemic hit us and COVID and stuff like that. And then just a week before we were supposed to fight, I was ready to fight. And then a week before, it all got cancelled. So, obviously, I was gutted, you know, and I was ready to fight. I've always wanted to fight Macron. I've always seen him before, even yeah. even I, I was in the UFC. i seen him fight Andy Ogle, where he, he stole it on him a little bit with the scissor knee mm -hmm. uh, when he was supposed to touch gloves. But anyway, it is what it is. But, yeah, I remember that fight and... I was. I've always thought. Yeah, I think I'll end up fighting him one day, and it's come around, and it's finally, I think, going to happen. It is a great matchup as well, considering where you both at. Because, like, from his perspective, definitely from his perspective, it's a must-win, isn't it? He, he yeah. he'll be putting the pressure on himself, and for you, you want to get right back in that win column. What what is this one going to be like for yourself? Are you expecting like an ultra aggressive matchup from both of you? I mean, I've not put any extra pressure on myself, no. did I mean? But I am going out there to make a statement and put on a performance. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic matchup, you know. And we're both, you know, I'm coming off a couple of losses, he's coming off three losses, a couple of bad losses he's had, I've seen, you know, he, he, he lost to Laurent Murphy his last fight, mm. got caught with a good knee, if that was a nice fight, Laurent Murphy, I thought. And yeah, we're both out there, I think, ready to put on a performance, and we're both there fighting kind of for our jobs, I suppose, in a way. You mentioned it like that, but, you know, your first fight ever uh, for the UFC, UFC London. What what an amazing night that was! Yeah. First fight with um with a crowd like that. Is that something that you're reflecting back on looking into this one? Because I'm sure that all your mates are back on it now with the COVID restrictions yeah. gone. It's going to be something else. I, I saw that you put a a video up with one of your friends in the crowd cheering you on on Instagram the other day. It's great to see. Yeah, that was that was. Um Obviously, my last win, but yeah. I'm unbeaten in London, you know, so yeah. uh, I'm ready to go and do it again. And yeah, I've, I've got a lot of fans going, you know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of tickets going out there. Everyone's messaging me, asking me for tickets, even though I can't get them. But a lot of people's going, you know, and the support's going to be fantastic. Mm. Especially, especially, obviously, with Tom being the main event, you know, both very close. He's, he's from Everton, I'm from Wigan, and it's going to be um, going to follow Wiganers, I think. Yeah, I mean, you've had a few of these circumstances now. I remember the first one on, on Fight, Li Fight Island a couple of years ago when it was yourself, Tom and Darren. Darren was main event against Whitaker. You're all on the card. So it's got to be really helpful to draw energy from each other when um, you and Tom, Tom being the main event, to um, spur each other on in camp as well. Yeah, it comes comes great when obviously with it's a few fighting. It's not just us two fighting. You know, everyone on the team is a ball up there, and and everyone on the team is matched. Wow. Um, from now until second of April, so you know everyone everyone's in training. There's about twenty of in training, and everyone's you know competing for the same goal, getting the and getting the win really. So it's not just about me and Tom, obviously. You know, we're fighting the UFC, obviously, but I'm saying that all the lads are fighting. So the atmosphere is brilliant at the moment. Everyone's in training. Everyone's want to, you know, want to win each other and, and get better and progress to set together, really, and get the wins before the end of April. I mean, every, every time you go in there, you always put on a show, win or lose. I remember the fight before the Lando one. It was really unlucky because you got injured um, early on in the fight, didn't you? Yeah. And, you and you battled on till the end. Um, just looking at that Lando one as well, what are the biggest things that you take away now? Because... Like it's all it's all plain sailing and, and, and fun and games when when you're winning, um, but when things aren't going your way, that's when you learn the most about yourself and, and learn about those around you. What has that experience been like, it, just in in terms of your perspective in the fight game? Yeah, you're hundred percent right. You know, I mean, you learn, you do learn learn a lot from your losses. I mean, you learn from your wins, obviously. Yeah. You know, our coach always tells us we learn from both. Mm. But um, yeah, I've learned from both fights that I've lost. Um, you know, I fought against Movsa. I did. I did. I did get injured in the first round. I broke my jaw in the first round, and it blurred my vision. So, yeah. it was. Um, you know, I mean, I carried on obviously, and I would never, would I would never stop. But yeah, so I learned a lot from that. You know, I showed how tough I could be, and I will not stop. And then obviously Lando. You know, there's a few a lot, a lot I learned in that fight too. You know, I mean. I kept going all the way through. I remember the commentators saying, you know, Grundy can't keep this pace, he's going to get tired, but I kept that pace till, till the end of the bell, you know, till the end of round three. So, you know, that's just a bit of confidence I can take from that fight, and which is going to be tucked into this fight because, you know, if you're looking at Mac one and his, his past record and, you know, the way he, he kind of gets tired, especially during the second and stuff like that, and that you, I've gone in, going back in with this confidence where I know I can go all three rounds non-stop, then it's going to be a, it's going to be a bad night for him.
because not just in the cage but also out the cage the past couple of years you have had some battles obviously the time when you was ready to fight and covid happened that was you just had some really rough yes. shit luck haven't you uh, yes. in, in in some circumstances so the way that you battled through that how, how much of a testament is that to your character and o- overcoming all of this how much stronger do you think it's made you you know as a person and a fighter because it in any walk of life, it's been a tough couple of years, hasn't it? But yeah, yeah. to be a fighter, I can't imagine how tough that is. You know, the the lonely training camps, the lonely hotel rooms, everything like that. It must have been. It must have been tricky. Yeah, it's been a it's been a tough, tough, very tough road. You know, what I mean, it's um, coming from. I mean, it's been in the UFC now since 2019, my yeah. first fight. So that's three years, but I've only had I've only had three fights. Do you know what I mean? So, you know. Obviously, we've got to support support our family and things like that. So financially, you've got to you've got to get the money in too. And only three fights is not enough. And um, it's no, it's not, not no one else's fault. Obviously, I've had injuries. Then the pandemic's twice has done me. You know, I was supposed to fight Nick Lentz and um, COVID. Somebody had COVID, and then obviously the pandemic when I was supposed to fight Mac on last. So yeah, I've just had a bit of bad luck. And but I ain't going to dwell on it. No. I'm going to think positively. And I'm fighting Mac one in five weeks' time, and I'm going to go there and I'm going to make a statement, put on a performance, and, and that, that's who I am, and that's what's going to happen. And I always try and fit, take the positives out of any bad situation, and that's just the way I am. Yeah. So I do that in 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 my life and in my, in my training, and it's also making setting an example to my own son, who's, who's who's following kind of the footsteps. Really, you can't just give up just because something's stepped in your way. There's been a like, slight hiccup in the in the journey. You know what I mean? You've just got to crack on, and you've just got to get your head in and carry on training hard and carry on get in the fights and hopefully getting out there and getting the wins. You mentioned your son as well. Obviously, I see that outside of this gym, you and your son train a lot together. How helpful is it having someone in your own family, obviously someone you're so close to, be there right beside you? So it's not like such a lonely road as well. It's not, no. We're all, we're obviously, we're always talking about fighting and things like that and he's he's loving it at the moment. He, he, he wants to make a, a career out of it and, and I think he will. You know, he's very talented. He's coming here now, training probably four to five times a week. Uh, in Liverpool, he's training in Wigan, and then plus we're doing stuff as well. So, yeah, he's he's developing really quick, and yeah, it's it's, it's um, we have a very good good relationship within the fighting and as a, as a dad and a lad really. So, yeah, it's a, it's not it's not a lonely road as much anymore. We spoke before about you know the, the the great British MMA scene that we have at the moment, and in your division, you know we've got Larone as you mentioned, Arnold Allen, Larone being a common opponent of um, Macwans. Would you welcome that fight if it was to present itself, the Lerone Murphy fight? Yeah, I would welcome any fight. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've never, my coach has always come to me and said, this is the fight, you've got whatever, that's fine. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, of course I'd welcome Leron 100%. You guys are pretty close together um, in, in terms of where you're at in your careers and I think that would be a great one if the UFC comes back to England. I think domestically, yeah, that would be a great fight. Do you know what I mean? It's like in London or something like that, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be a class fight, or hopefully on the main card or something like that. That'd be a 100%. great fight for the fans. Yeah. Um, and then we look at the the title picture as well. Obviously, we had the Holloway pull out. Volkanovski fights um, Korean Zombie in um, early April. How do you see that one going? Do you think Korean Zombie could cause him quite a few problems? Uh, I think Volkanovski's taking that as well. Yeah, he's um, technically he, he comes in. He's, he's very good, and he, but he comes in with a very good game plan. You know, from what he's done to to Max um, a couple of times. He's, I think he's. I think he's. Uh, I think he's very good. He's an intelligent fighter. I think. I think Volkanovski takes that. And then I, I spoke to Tom about um, a similar thing in terms of you guys fighting on the same card. And he says that you kind of have to have tunnel tunnel vision on your own fight. It's great that you're all competing on the same card. Um, but on fight night, it's just focusing on yourself. What is that the same perspective for yourself um, in terms of your teammates? Because obviously you're, you're on before, Tom, so you can re- relax in whatever case your result is. Um, and you can watch that, but win, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, win, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, you 100 percent is right. You know, you've got to you've got to fully concentrate on yourself. You know, you, you've got a, you've got a job to do that night. Mm-hmm. You can't really focus on anything else. So you have just got to do what you want to do before you know your pre-match, pre-fight uh, rituals or whatever you do like that, and and just fully focus on that fight. And it's about yourself. It's about you, and that's it. You've got to be selfish. So part of you never thinks about when that circumstance happened, happened a few years ago when it was you, Tom and Darren, part of you not thinking, I hope they're going to be all good. Because it's, yeah, it's, mean, it's a tough one, isn't it? Does, it? it does still you know, pop into your mind, yeah. you know what I mean? Because obviously you, you, you 100% want your teammates to yeah. win, but yeah. you've got a job to do yourself and you know, you're you gonna, get you, you've got to be 100% on yours. And then as soon as I, 
I mean, it was Darren who fought main event when I fought last in London. As soon as yeah. I won and I was in the back and I was then 100% concentrated on Darren, you know, I even cornered him that night. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you do you do still have the thoughts about him, but you have got to concentrate on yourself. Yeah. And um, as well, just discuss a bit about your relationship with Colin, because obviously he's built one of the premier gyms in this country. You've been here a long, long time. How did that um, relationship come about and how strong is that relationship with Colin? Yeah, yeah, it's strong. I mean, obviously, he's he developed the best team in the world in my eyes and he's the best coach in the world, you know what I mean? Just because he doesn't do too much on social media, I think he deserves to be in them kind of conversations with all these that get the awards every year and people like that, mm. um, you know, and, and, and he, is, he is one of the best in the world. Um, relationship's great. Look, the team is developed, you know, when... when I'm not fighting, I'm still in to, to train with the lads and coach with the lads and whatever. And so is all everyone else, you know, we're, we're a tight-knit team and we, we make sure we're in for each other even when we're not fighting. But I mean, it's that it come about when, when I first started t Team Carbon was because I was a wrestler at um, the national team yeah. and Terry had him come down once to train with us just because he was just having his second fight in the UFC, he was against a wrestler. and. Um, he said to come would I come down to Liverpool and I come down to Liverpool and I started coaching and helping train and, co and, and training with Terry and then I ended up just loving the sport it was just a different challenge from wrestling mm. there was so much to learn and I'm still learning every single day I'm still learning something new because there's so many there's like five different six different disciplines that you've got to learn in, in MMA yeah. you know in wrestling you just go wrestle and that's it so I found a new challenge and, and that's why I kind of crossed over and you know training at Team Carbon was harder than training at the the British team, wow. if you like. So it was just a, a new challenge for me then. And then obviously we mentioned Maquan's career. Um last fight, brutal uh knockout loss against L Laro Murphy. He got caught coming in with the knee. Um is that chin something that you're looking to exploit? Because we all know that you've got great power in your hands aside from the wrestling and, and we, we've seen that on the stand-up game you, you've got brutal stand-up brutal ground and pound is that something that you really want to push home in this fight or is it just a case of wherever it goes on the night it'll go yeah yeah it will be like that because when you fight you're just fight, kind of fighting automatic mode that's the best time you you know you flow in you're in flow flow motion and uh, you know you want to perform but yeah i'll be i'll be looking to to finish to finish mac one on the night Perfect. Really appreciate your time, Mike. Thanks very much, Mike. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.